All right, we are live here on Amazon and a couple of other outlets as well, but mainly here on Amazon Live. And we are gonna be doing unboxing. I love unboxing days. I love new tech, new year, new things to uh, touch and feel and connect, all that good stuff. So um, welcome here. Let me show you guys a brief preview of what we're gonna be unboxing today. So this is a Zego PTZ 20X SDI camera, okay? So Zego sent this over to me to take a look at, unbox it, review it, all that good stuff. I literally have not un unboxed it yet, so it's a real-time unboxing. I haven't looked at anything inside of it. Uh, if you guys are brand new here, you uh, don't know, but I have a lot of cameras going on here, like behind-the-scenes cameras over there as well. Uh, got my other camera sitting right here as well. So I'm a camera nerd, if you want to call me that. So I love being able to show different angles, especially when I teach people how to use digital technology pieces of equipment. So we're going to be doing an unboxing. If you guys are brand new, make sure you hit that follow button. You're more than welcome to chat in the comments. Give me some feedback. Um, if there's certain things you want me to look at while we're here on Amazon today, definitely let me know as well. Want to shout out my people that are watching over here. I got people, I see Sydney, I see G Alberts over there. I saw Brian pop on a little bit. If you're on Amazon, let me know that you're here and watching as well. All right. So let's get to some unboxing. I love my PTZ camera. So that's what we're going to be looking at today specifically is this PTZ camera that's on the desk. So I'm going to hop on over here uh, to the desk and walk you guys through the PTZs. And I think I'm going to do a little DVD action as well. That way you guys can see multiple angles of what we got going on here. So let's do DVE7. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to bring my iPad with me as well. So I'm going to talk about some different products um, that I'm using along with the PTZ camera. So if, um, if you're interested in some of the accessories that I kind of use to set up the camera to connect it as well. Now, what I like about PTZ cameras specifically is the fact that they pan, tilt and zoom, hence PTZ. OK, so this PTZ camera, like I said, was sent over from a company called Zego. And P these PTZ cameras allow me to pan, tilt and zoom. And I like them because I do hybrid live stream conferences. So if I can like get a good shot of the entire room with one camera, I can essentially create multiple camera angles. And even in this you know, office space, it comes in handy as well. So let me see if I can get this thing unboxed without like destroying the box because I actually want to keep the box. So this is a 20X PTZ camera okay so it essentially has a 20x times zoom i can do, zoom in 20x on it all right so let's take off the top here and the first thing we got here is a mounting plate so that's nice typically these don't come with mounting plates so it is good to have a mountain plate with these i'm gonna actually move this box this light over too so we get some more light over here today all right, so it comes with this mountain plate so we can actually set the camera on top of it or you could actually set the camera underneath it and get uh, get that shot that you need. All right, so let's see what we got in the boxes here. All right, so this box number one and we've got power cable here and the brick. And we'll talk about power specifically because this camera has a uh, PoE as well, so you actually don't need this, and we'll we'll talk about why you don't even need the power that it gives you. We've got some mounting screws here, okay. so these for uh, screwing the camera onto that that uh, base we just looked at. Here's one of our uh, connection cables for our controller. Now I do, if you see, I do have two controllers that sit off to the side here. And this is what would be used to connect the camera to the controller. And then we have our handy dandy remote, which you can preset uh, different settings for the camera. And what I like about these remotes, um, I actually have multiple ones. Let me grab this one that's just off frame here. Um, is you can actually control four cameras with one remote. So these come in handy as well. Now, 
let me set that off to the side and that is all in box one gotta love it i'm gonna make a good old mess today guys all for you well I, this is a good mess because i like new gear let's see what's in box number two all right let's open this up and feels like another plate let's see all right so we got another mounting plate right there okay so it gives you two now this is the first ptz camera i've received or bought that gives you the mounting plates in there typically you have to buy those separately so it's nice to have those in one and if you're on Amazon, you can see that the price of this PTZ camera is definitely reasonable compared to some other price points for a 20X camera. And as we can see here, it comes with our user guide, user manual as well. So need that to get started. Now, let's move that out the way and get to the good part, which is the actual camera itself. All right. So, got that, got that, and the camera. All right, so let's get this box out of the way here. Now, if you guys are uh, using PTZ cameras or just interested in general, let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, I will definitely let people know what PTZ is. Like on Amazon Live, I get a long time to kind of walk through stuff. So I will be definitely talking what POE is because those of you on Amazon see that all the products that I have associated with this camera are for a specific reason. So right now, the PTZ camera is highlighted in the carousel. All right, let's take a look at the camera itself here on the back. Let me get that one last piece out here. All right, so on the back of this camera, we have different connections here. Uh, let me flip it right side up so you guys can read those. So we have our, the, the, I'm just going to really call out the essential parts of this. Line in if we want to use some audio. We have our network LAN connection, which is we're going to use to uh, talk about POE and be able to put this on our network. So if you have a true you know, business network, home network, you can connect this to your network and control it. Uh, we have HDMI, which is how I'm probably gonna set this up into my uh, uh, ATEM switcher over there. We have the SDI connection. We have our USB 2.0 for any updates, our DC power connection, on off button have it right here as well. Um, YouTube is not getting the stream. Um, YouTube is not getting the stream. Uh, let's see what that. Is. I'm gonna refresh over there. Yep, I see YouTube and eight people over there, so we're good over there. Um, then we also have our RS232 in and out. So this is what we can use to connect to our controller. So we're gonna uh, plug our controller into here. And if we want the daisy chain multiple PTZ cameras together, we can do that. And then our system select, which allows us to change the resolution of the camera. And we got the nice Zego branding on it. And we have our privacy cover. So we're gonna go ahead and just take the privacy cover off for now. And set that off to the side along with a lot of this other stuff we're going to set off to the side. Now, I'm going to be using this camera. I'm definitely going to be using this camera for live streaming and an upcoming conference. So I will be, you know, documenting some behind the scenes footage of that. So if you're not following the channel, uh, make sure you do that. So let's move this out the way here. OK, so quickly want to kind of talk about. Let's go wide real quick. I want to talk about PoE, uh, which is power over Ethernet. And let me move this off screen too so you guys can see me here. All right, there we go. So power over Ethernet essentially is being able to plug into our network and getting power literally from our network to, to power on our device. 
So like I mentioned earlier, we could, if we wanted to uh, plug in our power like normal and connect our camera. But what I'm gonna do is plug it into my PoE switch. And that's actually hidden underneath my desk. So let me highlight that in the product carousel, the, the switch I'm actually using, which is the TP-Link uh, TLSG uh, 1005P. So long name for a, a pretty small device. And it's a four port switch or five port switch rather, um, four ports for actually connecting to devices. One port is just the input. And it allows me to connect my devices hardwired to my network. So let me grab my cable here and connect it to my switch that's literally underneath my desk here. So underneath here, we're gonna plug in. Now I hope all of these are PoE because I don't remember which ones were PoE and which ones weren't. All right, powered. And we'll bring this up here. And we will connect this into our camera. And we'll give it a few seconds there. Right, let's hit on button on the camera too. Let's see, come on, power up. And then I have, let me find my other PoE cable. Uh, you know what I'll do? Since I know, I know I've got that one in the PoE port, I'll take it off my uh, controller. I'll just use regular power for my controller. So let's do this. So I'll plug that into there and I'm just gonna run because my my controller's PoE too. Alright. So I just got this the power on and literally didn't even use my power cable. I just used the PoE port on the switch and just had the network cable plugged into it and turn the power button on. So let's switch over to top down there. Oops. So you see here, blinking lights, I got my network connection, I hit the power button on here. And so now it's just, we get to eliminate cables, which is nice. So I don't even have to plug any power in and just one network cable for that, okay? So now that's connected to my network and powered on. Um, I'll highlight in the product carousel here on Amazon, the cables that I'm using. I'm using Cat7 cables here. Uh, pretty much everywhere that's got a network connected to it. My computer, Cat7, coming to the uh, PTZ Optics SuperJoy controller. I got Cat7, well, I had Cat7 now, I'm just using it for that for right now. Uh, so I'm using Cat7 cables to come around. Now, what this also has is the ability to uh, connect to the controller, right? So that's what we wanna do. And I'm going to actually use, I'm going to use the connections that I currently have on this PTZ camera. Since I, so I don't have to run new cap, uh, cables, it'll just be super easy. Now, this PTZ camera is from PTZ Optics. And currently, the shot that this uh, shows you is this angle right here, okay? So I'm going to disconnect the, the cables that are already connected to it and just use it for what we got going on right now. So let's do DVE, well, let's do DVE four. I'll turn that on for now that we got two different angles. So I'm going to get my connection from here, which is my out. And I'll explain these connections here in a second. In there. That way I don't make such a big mess here. Okay. And there. All right. So what I got going on here is an HDMI cable. And this HDMI is going to go into the HDMI 
on the back of the camera here. And the reason I'm using this HDMI cable is because this HDMI cable is actually connected to my ATEM switcher. Okay, so I want to be able to switch cameras and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to physically connect the HDMI to my switcher. So when I hit the number on here, you guys will see it. Matter of fact, it's already it's already showing up right now. So so this is the angle. This is the camera right now. That's that's the Zego camera like right now. Okay, so I'm literally just going to like move it. And you see, that's just me physically moving it. So this is the camera and that easily it's already hooked up. Okay, it's already into my live streaming setup. If I wanted to use the uh, remote, I could use the remote like right now. I just don't have the batteries in there. So let's continue getting this set up. So I want to bring in now one of my Visca uh, RS-232 cables. Now the RS-232 cables already run from my controller. Let's move this out the way a little bit here. So let me find my SuperJoy controller here in the product carousel. So my SuperJoy controller um, is PTZ Optics, and this is going to allow me to control my PTZ camera, okay? Now, I am a huge fan of these controllers because it's like playing a video game, essentially. You can pan, tilt, zoom, set up presets for the the camera itself and we'll demo a little bit of that out too so i've already got the physical connection to the back and again the zego camera it comes with the cable that you need so i don't essentially need the cable in this instance since i already have it set up and i'm just going to literally plug it into my uh, camera so let's do top down there i hope i grab the right one because um, i think this one was in so let's go and plug that one in. Okay. So now that one's in. And if I go to cam one there, if I move that up, you see it move up, down, left, right. And so these PTZ cameras, not only are they functional, but they're like, they're super easy to set up. All right. Like literally I, plugged in one cable to the network so I could actually log in on my computer, do some settings on it, plug the HDMI in to bring it into my uh, ATEM switcher and then plug a uh, controller cable into it on one end so now I can control it using the joystick, all right? So let's switch over to the actual camera itself. So I'm gonna go to camera five. You guys will see me right here, Zego camera. And I'm just gonna, you know, pan it over there. I can look at my screen on Amazon. I can watch myself on Amazon right there. So if you guys are in the chat, let me see. Since the computer's so far away from me, I can cheat. So who's that that says, I'm cheating to read. Our church has this camera and we use it in easy worship, but for some reason, uh, we set up the feed. The camera is super slow to respond. It was working. We use the huddle cam also, okay. Yeah, well, it's working pretty quick for me here. It's so, uh, it could be a firmware thing. So definitely, definitely check the firmware and make sure it's updated to the most recent. I know that I was trying to set up my, my controller to talk to both cameras and my 12X camera that I actually have up here was responding really slow, but updating the firmware on it definitely helped out with that. And so you mentioned the, uh, the huddle cam. So I do use that huddle cam as well, which I have sitting right over here. So let's do top down over here. So I have my huddle cam controller. I don't use it as often now that I have the Super Joy, but the huddle cam works really well. I actually use this at my church as well. And we got this hooked up and got some presets going on for it and being able to have this ability to daisy chain multiple PTZ cameras together and just control everything from the joysticks makes life a lot easier. They, uh, the controller, uh, remote controller does work, but it's definitely easier to use it on here. Uh, let me check over here on YouTube, make sure I'm not missing anybody. Um, also good on YouTube, okay. 
Uh, G. Albert says, I don't know that PTZ cameras could daisy chain. I will have to check it out. Yep, they can definitely daisy chain. So let me show you that real quick of how that works. It, you guys are going to hear me say something funny, but it's so true. I need more cameras because sometimes I need to show a camera of the camera, but I have to kind of readjust where I'm at to make it work. So let's see if we can make this. I'm trying to get this shot to work so you guys can see. I like to show, you know, the reality of what this looks like, right? All right, so here's my other PTZ camera and I actually have it turned off right now because I think I need to replace the HDMI cable. My HDMI cable, I think there's something wrong because it keeps blinking, my camera keeps blinking. So I'm gonna show it to you, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you guys suffer through the blinking of the camera. But let me turn it on real quick. Now, out, out of the back of the PTZ cameras in general, now this is a different brand, this is PTZ Optics, but you'll notice that the back of this camera is like the same. Uh, so let's, let's go over here. Okay. So I'll show you on this one here. All right, so just like the back of the other camera, the Zego camera that we're looking at today. All right you'll have an input and an output, right? So on the Zego camera, I'm already using the in. So what I'll do is I'll use the output on the Zego and come out of the Zego and then come in to my second camera, okay? So out of the Zego into my second camera. And then if I want to add a third PTZ optics camera, I would literally come, a cable come out of this one and the input of the next one. Okay, so that's how you would daisy chain these together. Now, let me move, let me, or let me connect it because I already had this, my PTZ over here set up with the cables already run. So we're just gonna grab that. And I may need to reset it, I may not, we'll see. And make sure this camera is, yeah, let's just go ahead and reset this just to make sure we can get it to talk. Okay. Okay, so I've got second camera set up there. And position that a little bit better so you guys can see it. All right, so let's switch over, look at our second camera. And I'm gonna go to my joystick, select camera two. And let's see. Yeah, I might have to reset it on here. All right, let's reset this camera real quick. Let's reset that. And then while I'm resetting that, just getting them to talk to each other. Let me show you guys, let's see if I had it in here, the cable that I'm using to daisy chain together. Okay. All right, so I just highlighted in the product carousel, the Wireness 75 foot Visca. Now, this one isn't a 75 foot, but I do take my 75 foot with me when I do an event uh, so I can physically daisy chain my PTZs together. Sometimes I have my PTZs actually sitting right next to each other. So I'll take the smaller cable with me. That way um, the cable, I don't have so much excess cable, but having both cameras right next to each other, I can have one zoomed in and then one have like the wide crowd shot. Um, but if they're further away, then that's why I kind of like to have that 75 foot so I can put them in two different, completely different angles. Um, so now with having one camera right here, one over here, and now the Zego, then I'm gonna have three PTZ cameras to work, kind of work with there. All right, so let's see if I can get this to work now. Uh, still nothing there. All right, what did I do here? Oh, gotta turn it back on. Duh. All right, so let's turn it back on. I turned it off, but didn't turn it back on. All right, let me check other. Uh, notice that you have flat Cat7 cables. Is that a minimum spec for the PTZ camera on PoE cables? No, nope, just preference. Um, my cables is just preference. I just, Cat7 is a little bit faster than Cat5, faster than Cat6, so just preference. Uh, ask if they are using HDMI or SDI connections on a PCZ. Wonder if that makes a difference. Okay, so G. Albert was saying in, in uh, response to 
the or in response to the Amazon Live about the connection being slow. If you are using cat, uh, if you are using HDMI or if you are using SDI, that could be a reason. And let me see. Geek lady, what's going on? Welcome. Are you using OBS with the cameras? So I bounce between multiple platforms. Um, right now I'm using Wirecast, but you can easily use OBS. You can use StreamYard. You can use vMix. You can use Restream. You can use, what else is out there? BeLive, uh, OBS Streamlabs. You name a live streaming platform, these cameras can work with it because all you're doing is connecting them to your computer essentially and then when you're on your computer you're just bringing up whatever connect camera is connected there now you do need a capture card something like that so that the cameras can see the computer and so the computer can see the camera uh, that's why i use my atem switcher it kind of acts as a capture card or you can use a, a you know another capture card which i've got plenty of those the elgato capture cards here. So literally, let me switch over to camera one here. Um, ooh, I forgot that I was using the stool for here. I don't know, I was, I was feeling a little short. I'm already short, but I was feeling real short just now. Um, <laughs> you can use this, let's see, I'm trying to hide my face there. Um, connect your HDMI from the PTZ cameras into the HDMI here, and then plug it USB into your computer and then it'll pick it up real easy. Okay, so let's switch back there. All right, so now jump back over here and see if I got my daisy chains to work. So camera one. Okay, there's camera one moving and then camera two. There we go, there we go, all right. I just had to resync everything. So let me show you what we got going on here after I put this bag back together. Those of you all that are brand new here, especially on Amazon, the place to be, Amazon Live. You can check out all the products in real time. And uh, there's a lot more of you all over here on Amazon. So that's always cool uh, to meet some new folks. All right, so let me switch over the camera. This is a Zego. So looking at you on the Zego PTZ camera. And I'm going to point it up to our camera that we just daisy chained. If I go in the right direction, let's go one. All right, so there's a camera that we just daisy chained right there. So on my controller, what I'm gonna do is hit camera. Let me show you guys the top down. So, okay, so on my controller here, I'm gonna do camera two because that's the second camera in the daisy chain essentially. And now I can control camera two using the joystick so you can see it moving so i've now daisy chained them together right so now i can switch over to camera six and look at the camera right up there that i daisy chained together so um i would daisy chain the other ones together so all three would be daisy chained but this setup is going to be taken down for the conference that I got to do in a couple weeks, so I don't want to hook it all up just to take it all back down and then rehook it all back up um, like two weeks later. So, but you can daisy chain multiple ones together because as you see on the controller, um, by default, this specific controller has six, but you can control way more PTZ cameras together in real time. Um, and then over on the huddle cam, the huddle cam defaults and has four already. So you can definitely daisy chain multiple, multiple um, PTZ cameras at the same time. All right, uh, let me see. Let me check my questions here on Amazon. And let me highlight the Zego camera. Shout out to Zego. Everybody in the comments say, thank you Zego, because they sent over the camera for a review. So testing it out, seeing what it looks like today all right let me check uh what's going on brian good to see you over here on uh all right let me switch cameras because it's starting to blink um good to see you on youtube uh 
Giavra says, do you have any SDI connections? I heard that there was a length restriction consideration with HDMI future. You may want to test SDI cable connections. So when it comes to HDMI, what up, Kirk? I see you over there, sir. I see you, Kirk. Kirk, they sent me a PTZ camera, Kirk. That's, this is the second PTZ I got sent, right? So we, we had one donated to a local church. And now here's the second one. So PTZ cameras, right? Kurt, Kurt's a, uh, he's a techie guy too. He's a live streamer. So y'all make sure y'all check out Kurt. He's got the blue badge on here too. So that means he's an Amazon live streamer. So y'all check out Kurt. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the HDMI connections, uh, rule of thumb is a 50 foot run. Okay. So I would take this camera or the camera you're looking at me on and the max distance I would probably want to go is 50 feet. Now, I've set up a lot of cameras at that 50 feet distance and haven't had any issues. Anything past 50 feet, the recommendation is to go with SDI, which gives you about 300 feet in length. Now, those of you that have saw the YouTube video that I put out about installing a, a camera at my local church, for some reason, I could not get that connection to be stable. It was a 300 foot run with SDI using um, converters, but it, it, it just wasn't stable. It was going in and out. It was, it was just not gonna work, right? But uh, I did find a HDMI cable, a fiber HDMI cable, and I'm gonna put that here. I'm gonna highlight it right now on Amazon. So if you look in the, in the, uh, uh, the carousel, the product carousel right now, I have highlighted a 4K HDMI cable, okay? Now, what this cable is, it's a one-way HDMI cable, and I don't know the distance on it off the top of my head. Let me come over here to my computer and pull it up. 100 foot, it's a 100 foot cable, okay? So, anybody that's 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 worked with uh, fiber cables, we know they, they can easily break, but what they did was they put the fiber cable inside the the strengthening and backing of a HDMI cable. And I ran this cable and had no problems. It's a one-way cable. So you gotta make sure that you plug the output side into where you wanna come from, which is your camera, and the input side into where you want it to go. So in my case, it would come out of the camera and it would come into my switcher device, okay? And it's a one-way HDMI cable. And I the one I got highlighted is the one I use at my local church and it works Fine. You'll see it'll say display and it'll say source. Okay, so it's it's pretty easy to connect it. It's literally an HDMI cable, but it's got fiber built into it, so it's faster. Because if you try to run a regular HDMI cable a hundred feet, you would definitely lose signal along the way. It would it would definitely be noticeable and laggy and things like that. But um, the one hundred foot one that I've been using at my at my church hasn't had an issue. So. Um, I'm loving that as an alternative. Plus, it allows me to not have to use so many adapters and converters and all that stuff to, you know, you got to go from SDI to HDMI or HDMI to SDI. Then you got to run the SDI. Then you got to convert it back to HDMI and it's too much extra components inside of your setup that you've got to troubleshoot when something's not working. So when I first had the, the setup with the SDI connections, and trying to figure out is it the SDI cable that's not working that I already strung up and wrapped up all nice and neat because I, last thing I want to do is you know replace the cable that I spent so much time setting up and then it was like okay well is it the converter boxes is it that converter box or is it that converter box is it the HDMI coming from the converter box or the HDMI going to the camera from the converter box so there's just so many different things you got to troubleshoot the more elements that you bring into your live stream setup. So the HDMI one-way connection that allows me to go to 100 feet, um, just way easier to use. Um, let me see here. Albert says, maybe you can work with Kurt to try NDI. So <laughs> yeah, because Kurt's got a nice NDI setup. So um, I've been playing with a little bit more NDI uh, with my Wirecast platform that I use. And so I'll bring in NDI like my laptop as an additional camera source or my iPhone. I'll bring in NDI into my Wirecast using the NDI app. So that is that is something maybe we can we can play around with a little bit. 
Uh, let me come over here to Facebook because I've been neglecting Facebook over here. Uh, what's up? My lovely wife is on here. She says she loves my setup. She was in my office yesterday while I was out. So um, she didn't do a live stream. So at least she didn't tell me she did a live stream from here. So um, good to see you, of course. My dude Danny Davis is in here as well. Um, if you guys saw my YouTube video about uh, a live stream setup at a local boxing event, um, my dude Daniel, he was the one that helped me set that all up and everything. So we had a good time. We were using our PTZ cameras, had to had to bring out the ladder and uh, I had Daniel up on the ladder, but like, yo, you're just taller. Can you put this camera up at the top? So we actually, and that's what we did. I mean, we took this PTZ camera here. We took my PTZ camera that's over my shoulder. We brought both of those. Um, and it, it, you know, you can definitely check out some of the footage from the PTZ cameras. So we got that set up and we were actually using the, uh, the huddle cam controller because I didn't have the, I didn't have the super joy. So we were using the huddle cam controller and he was on the controller. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel, I don't know if that was your first um, time using the PTZ cameras just in general, but um, we made it work, man. We made it work. Um, so let me come over here. I want to I switch angles so you guys can see me on here. Uh, let's see here. Let me bring this down here. All right. All right. Do -do 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 -do. Oops, go this way. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Everything's backwards here. But I want you guys to actually see the quality of the Zego. I, I like looking at that shot because I know I'm looking at the camera. Uh, Geek Lady, thanks for the follow. Jeff Powers, what's going on? He says my PTZ Optics is on NDI. Yeah, I got my... I was going to set it up for NDI, but I keep moving them for these live stream conferences. So it's just so much easier to do HDMI. Because I'm also teaching people just like some of the basics, basics of like leveraging some of this technology and just making it easy for them. So by the time I set it all up and then I got to take it down and it's just like, man, but I got to do some videos on it. Um, Ryan Lindor Linder says you are the best presenter I've seen for this type of gear. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, Amazon customer says the boxing setup video was nice, awesome. So let me know who is Amazon customer because it literally just says Amazon customer. Otherwise, I'd definitely shout you out. Um, all right, make sure, let me check over here on Facebook. Roz Jones. <laughs> Roz, I see you over here. Um, I've been, I'm, we, we, we testing out something, Roz, but I can't, I can't like say it otherwise it'll throw off the test. But those of you all that are watching on platforms outside of Amazon Live, highly encourage you to come on over to Amazon Live for a reason. Um, Roz said the boxing setup was awesome. Uh, that shark was dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where are your purple lights? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm gonna join Team Kirk with the purple lights um, and Elysio too. So the lights that I have, uh, I don't have, I, I got some that are sitting up there right now. Do I have lights in the carousel today? No, I don't have lights in the carousel today. Oh, that's what I meant to show you. I put this in here intentionally so I would not forget. All right, now the PTZ cameras, they're pretty cool just in general, right? Because they pan, tilt, and zoom using the controllers. I tested out a couple weeks back on Amazon Live wireless, using the wireless functionality of the Hollyland Mars 400S Pros. And I got those highlighted in the carousel right now. So let me bring this light back over to me so we can have some light on me so y'all can see me. And I don't think my batteries are charged for this, but I could try it. If you guys wanna see it, just give me some yeses in the comments and I can try, but I'm not sure if my batteries are charged on it. But right now I have the Hollyland uh, 400S Pro wireless setup uh, highlighted in the Amazon product carousel. And if I didn't want to run an HDMI cable from my cameras into my switcher device, 
I could bring it in wirelessly. So if the distance is further than like that 100 foot and I just can't run cables, I would bring it in wirelessly. Now, the reason that that's beneficial, especially for me, is when I do these live stream events, like it's a lot of work where you got to take down cables so people don't trip over it. So it's not a hazard. Maybe the positioning of the camera, it needs to be like higher and you, you know, it, the cable run just won't quite get it to where you need it to go. So I, I was like, man, I was sitting here one day and I was like, let me just try to see if it would, if, it, if I could make this work wireless connection from my PTZ cameras into the uh, ATEM Mini and control them that way, right? And it worked, all right? Um, Kirk says, yes. Albert says, why not? Sure. All right, so, all right, do this for y'all. So let's get this set up here. So I, can, I should be able to do this pretty quick. Now, I might have to jerry-rig this camera right here with my connections here. I need an office, I need a studio. Me and my wife were talking a little bit earlier. She wants a studio so she can hang out with me some more. I want a studio for the same reason, and I need more space. So we got to make that happen. All right, so here are my, let me point this down so you guys can kind of see over here what I got working with. All right, so let's adjust this camera. Now, typically I'd use that PTZ that's over my shoulder, but I don't want you guys to have to see all that blinking action that's going on with it for some reason. All right, let's go here. So move my matcha out the way. And so you got a transmitter and a receiver, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the little plugs here. Take my antennas, screw those on. And all right, so we got one set up there and and these sync up pretty easy too. Like they, they actually automatically sync up. And I put this on the camera angle that you guys are looking at me now on my Sony A6400. I've done it on that before. All right, so we got that set up. Now let's see if these batteries are charged because that's the question. That is the question. All right, we're gonna hope. That these are charged up. All right, so let's plug these in here. And all right, all right. So now I need a short. I need a short HDMI to HDMI cable, which I think I have in slot eight. So let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not using number eight right now. So let's plug that one in there. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take all right, all right, turn on. Yes, they both turned on. <laughs> I don't know how much juice we got, but they're both on. Um, so we got a transmitter and we got our receiver. So we're gonna take our receiver and plug it into our ATEM, so it just is just an HDMI connection, okay? So HDMI on the back. So HDMI on the back right here, and I'm just gonna plug it into my camera number one here. Okay. And that's turned on. And then we're gonna take our second one wirelessly now and we're going to jump over here to our PTZ and we're going to disconnect okay we're going to disconnect our physical HDMI connection and we're going to plug in our small one connection here now I need another HDMI cable uh I'm over here hijacking stuff from everywhere Kirk, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> I'm trying to show people hashtag how it all works. Uh, make sure y'all check out that show, how it all works. All right. 
So HDMI connection now, this is a little short one, my wireless setup going into my uh, PTZ camera, all right? So now, if I switch back, I'm trying to see if I can show you all this. Well, I'll just show you the camera. So this is the camera, like we're set up right now, wirelessly, all right? So the joystick is over here. I can zoom in, zoom out, okay? So let me show you number seven, all right? So literally, here's my camera right here, okay? And my wireless connection, my Hollylands 400S Pro, and I can control it with my joystick wirelessly. So I love, I love the wireless setup on this thing. It, it makes my life a little bit easier to not have to worry about a full physical HDMI run from the camera, wherever that's going to be located, all the way to my, my video uh, setup, my, you know, my, my booth setup in my church or my conference setup, wherever that is. So being able to take this camera literally and just throw it like 300 feet away, I think that's the distance on it. Don't quote me. I got to look at it for sure. But being able to put it a good distance away, either up on it like a mount or somewhere out of sight, out of mind, and no physical cables need to be run all the way back, that's what I'm really loving about the wireless setup. So we got it to work in real time really, really quick too. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Uh, so it works. Let me reposition this camera a little bit so it's not continually cutting off my head. Uh, let me get over here to the chat. Uh, all right, let me go back up. Usually I don't get to say uh, the chat's moving faster than I can respond, but today I gotta scroll back up here. Uh, all right, Darius says, this will be the next PTZ camera that I will order. I have installed PTZ Optics, a couple of ACANs, and the full Maku, love the picture quality. Yeah, I think we have, I've hit all of those cameras as well, all those PTZ cameras as well. So they actually have a discount here um, on Amazon. So this is, this is one of the more affordable PTZ cameras that I've used so far. So the under, like right at that $700 price point right now. And the, it's the functionality for me because you got one camera that can go left, right, up, down, sideways, and you can, you know, switch cameras zoom in like the quality looks just so much better um yeah um albert says let me scroll down here monty how many different platforms are you streaming from i'm on facebook youtube amazon live are you hiding somewhere else so these are the only platforms i'm on right now i'm actually doing some beta testing with trying to get more people to come over here and hang out with me on amazon live um, so typically I, I would only stream on Amazon live, but I'm looking to like broaden that audience. But Amazon live is definitely like the platform to be because I can show, I can show the products that I'm referring to in real time. So it just makes it a lot easier. So like if somebody wants to know, well, Hey, what joystick are you using to control the cameras? They can like literally click the button while watching live. And like, I can click on the huddle cam. And you guys could like check out the huddle cam and put it in the cart and, you know, go through and read the description, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, right now, Facebook, YouTube, we're even streaming over with our partners um, on another platform on their channels right now using a pretty cool technology to stream share. Um, if you guys want to share my streams, hit me in the email online because you can actually carry my streams. Uh, on your channel. So technology is amazing. So I'm, I, I'm in a few different locations today. <laughs> um, my dude, Jay, man, we got to connect, man. It's been a minute. Uh, he streams to them all at the same time. Best tech show on the internet. Man, me and Jay go way back. Jay's a techie too. Um, Albert says you can always go to Kurt's Amazon live page to order HDMI cable if you're running short. Kurt, yeah, definitely put in your uh, your Amazon channel on here um, and do the hashtag how it all works because uh, if you guys find how it all works, just tell Kurt I sent you over there. 
So if you guys if you guys caught that YouTube video where I'm wearing the How It All Works shirt, I actually did a little. I, I said it in the video, and that's kind of where that came from. So um, let's see here. Yeah, Kurt, we got we we got to do. We should do an Amazon Live video together, like for one of your um, midweek huddles. Figure out how we can do that because there's so many people in your community that you know. We were talking about that camera, the Sony ZV uh, 10. Uh, yeah, we got we got to make that work because we definitely have enough gear between the both of us to have a good conversation. Microphones and lighting. I was watching your behind the scenes video. Uh, I, th I think you shot it a while ago, but the behind the scenes video of your setup, and I know people love the setup videos for sure. I know I do. I'm always watching other people's setup videos. So, you know, it's pretty cool to see like the behind the scenes and what it, what it takes to make things work. All right, so Kirk got all that over there. Albert says, so that's why I jumped over. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, okay, cool. So I think I got all my comments caught up over here. All right, let's jump over here, other side. <laughs> Let me show y'all the laptop real quick. I got to be honest with you. Today's one of my more fun live streams. Maybe it's this matcha that I had today. I don't know. Um, let me jump over here. I'm trying to find a computer. So I've got my uh, Acer computer over here today that I use and this is this is actually running I'll, I'll walk through this whole setup here in a minute I don't know why, why this is not on today I actually need this I was I knew I was forgetting something today all right um let me make sure I didn't mess up nothing over here on Facebook what up Sid he's the only guy that calls me weave so <laughs> Sid is the only guy that calls me weave I know uh, what's going on? Good to see you, sir. Congrats to your son as well. I hope the rest of the family's doing well. Um, Angela said, I didn't even know Amazon had a live. Wow, yes, Amazon has a live. And there are a bunch of, I have a bunch of different friends on here. I call them friends now. We're like virtual friends because I've only met like probably two in person. Um, but and that's because we go way back from school. But Amazon Live is a great platform where you'll find a lot of people talking about a lot of different products. I focus mainly on tech and digital related products. So sometimes we might do dedicated just in lighting. Um, obviously, with all the cameras, I'll move stuff around to kind of demonstrate how stuff is connected and uh, tripods. I did one on, you know, the Mac computer microphone. So I get a a lot of a gear sent to me to review to talk about i'll open stuff in real time i literally literally i like to do the unboxing in real time so that you can see that even as a techie sometimes we have to figure it out i have a gimbal that's up there now the gimbal is awesome okay the gimbal is awesome it took me an hour to figure out how to work it though so i know that if you guys see that oh man somebody else is having these issues too it's not just you then it just makes life a little bit easier and then especially if it's something that you're actually looking to purchase because if it takes me an hour to figure that out and i can streamline that process down for you by the time you get it to your door you're not trying to figure it out you don't have to go through the returns thinking it's not working because it was just something in the manual for that that was just missing that the the gimbal wasn't working and now if i would have seen it in the manual then it would have worked. But I was following in the manual step by step and it was not working. So um, matter of fact, uh, it was somebody here on Amazon Live. They were like, try this. And when I tried it, we were able to get it to work. So I like Amazon Live because you can see the demonstration of a lot of the products as well. And I, as you see here, I got a lot of stuff here to be able to demonstrate and kind of answer questions, which is why I love the chat feature. This chair was sent to me so like if people had questions about this chair and the functions of the chair i can demonstrate it this desk over here <laughs> was sent to me so do i have that in the product I think, yeah i got both of those in the product here so so I'll, I'll highlight the chair um so that's an ergonomic chair that i'm using here the desk is over here which is helping me out a lot um <laughs> with having some more space uh let me jump over here uh Trying to, I'm trying to make sure I don't miss no comments. So um, between all the platforms, um, Angela says, "Hey, what's going on?" 
Joe Swift, what's going on? Joseph checking in. Great show. I'm a tech guy myself. Awesome, awesome. Love hanging out with other techies. Um, Monica says, just passing through. Awesome. You're doing the PTZ unboxing. Thanks for sharing. Yep, checking out the, the Zigo today. The Zigo. So, they got the night. <laughs> the, whole, the only thing I wish they didn't do on this camera was like put the big old Zigo branding on it. But, you know, they want people to know who they are. So, outside of that, I just wish it wasn't so bold. Like maybe on the back or just a little bit smaller. But uh, those of you all that saw me hook this camera up, super simple to hook up in real time. Uh, let's see what else we got going on over here. Um, and if you guys have questions about the Zigo in particular, let me know, and then we'll um, then we'll uh, show a little bit more of the setup here. Uh, Brian says thanks for the demo. I have a rental of the product coming tomorrow. Cool. Regarding the wireless HDMI option, wouldn't you still need the uh, control cable going over serial? Um, yes. And no, so you could run it in the eye if you wanted to, um, but if you didn't need the control, so so context of why I tested it in the first place was I was gonna put the I was gonna put um, the camera in a position where I wasn't even gonna control it, and so it just made me think, well, can I just wirelessly throw it where I wanted to go? Because I wasn't gonna use it was gonna be a permanent wide shot anyway, but if you did want to go. Um, you would you would definitely want to run a long serial to it. Now, typically, kind of when I do some of like the live stream setups, I try to get in the most obscure location that I can, where I can make the rest of my setup a lot easier. Um, and so the, the the thought process for where I wanted to put the camera was going to be somewhere where I didn't need the physical control of it because it was just going to be a wide shot. Um, but yeah, you would still need the 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 um, serial cable to run if you wanted to control it that way. Or one super long network cable, um, which is a lot easier of a run than that serial cable. That serial cable can get pricey for sure. So the, the closer you sit to it, the better, because even the one, let me show you here. I think in the product carousel, did I put a long one in there? Uh, the boxing video, we sat real close to the one because the cable was short. Matthew, thanks for following me on Amazon. And then I see Amazon customer. Thanks for following here on Amazon. Let me see. I don't have it in the product here. So there's no, I got the 50 foot. Let me highlight the 50 foot on Amazon. The serial cable, I have a 50 footer on there. But the ones that come in the box, they're probably like a four footer. This might be a four footer or a six footer. So they're really short. So that's why I kind of went with the longer one just to have it with me. Um, uh, I'm over here looking at the comments way over there and I got the iPad in my hand. When you guys live stream, if you live stream, put yes in the comments. And then if you live stream a lot and you've got a lot different going, a lot of things different going on, you like, confuse yourself sometimes so I just confuse myself like I think I gotta look at my comments on Amazon right there but I can look at my Amazon comments right here I just got to check YouTube and Facebook over here so come on over to Amazon and watch this over here um Kurt says yes thank you I got somebody else that uh can can testify Kurt you just now following me what what in the world I thought you've been following me Kurt what is going on y'all hit that follow button like Kurt just did <laughs> uh, let me check these comments on Amazon. What up, Chris? Chris is another live streamer here on Amazon Live. Chris is the one that uh, Chris Chris motivated me to like really push and get on Amazon Live because I I started I put up a video. It's been over a year since I did my first test stream on Amazon Live just to kind of see what what we could do over here on this platform and you know talking about the same things I've talked about before and technology and how to use how you use it and then Chris jumped on over so he's a regular live streamer matter of fact I know he streamed yesterday um live um on the platform with uh Jeff so um definitely good to see you guys on here 
Uh, all right, let me scroll back up here. Um, Matthew Brown says, is it free to go live on Amazon Live? Yes, so if you are a content creator, social media influencer in pretty much any industry and you have a following on other platforms, uh, you can apply for what's called the Amazon Creators Program and uh, Influencer Program. And it's different from the Associates Program, but you can apply and if you have a follower count, it's really quick to get approved. And we have, Chris, if you're able to drop our Facebook group in the chat, but we have a Facebook group that I started. Wow, it's been eight, 10 months, something like that. And Chris is one of the admins in the group. And it's called Amazon Live Creators because I didn't, I couldn't find a space of where other Amazon Live Creators were hanging out if they had questions or something. So I had this little bright idea of like, let's just create a Facebook group. And now we have about 900 people plus in the Facebook group. We have not only live streamers, people that want to learn live streaming, we have brands, we have companies that have products that they want to collaborate with live streamers. So if you're in that space and you want to jump on live and talk about products that you own in your house, you know, clothes, you know, anything that you have that's sold on Amazon, this is a great place to be. You can collaborate with authors, speakers that have books journals matter of fact on friday we collaborated with some people that sell products on amazon and they didn't even know about amazon live and i said it's like one of the best places to get your products in front of people in real time and like have people actually demonstrate your product um let's see here is that the ipad pro that you are wheeling i just got one with the magic keyboard really nice you got to get one so this is an older i um, ipad this is probably about two or three versions back but it's the the big one but yeah so this is the older model i haven't i haven't been able to justify upgrading it yet so this one works pretty well for me i still mainly use it to play some couple games or take it with me when i travel but mainly i just use it for uh amazon live just to be able to monitor comments and move the items along the product carousel um Let's see here. <laughs> Chris said my setup bigger. It might feel bigger. I've got the 16 millimeter lens going on on that one today. So let me switch over. Where's my Zigo? Ah, oh, my Zigo. My, uh, I might have to physically plug back up the uh, connection on the Zigo here because it looks like my uh, wireless is like not holding out. It looks like it just died on me. So let me go back over here. But I got the 16 millimeter going on on that camera that you're looking at me on. Where is the power here? So let's, I've got a lot of cleanup work to do after this live stream. I didn't swap connections out. Oh no, that was still on. I'm looking at the wrong one. Let me plug that back up. All right, let's go. I forgot this is now on channel eight on the ATEM. Let's do that. The Hollyland setup is pretty quick. I'm going to show you guys real quick on screen here. So once I turned on my Hollyland system, it's basically looking to sync up. And let's go number seven so you guys can still see me on screen there. And there we go. It actually would have been quicker if I you know, had the antennas turned up. Um, so that's the Zego camera right there. And so it looks a little bit bigger because I'm using that wider, wider 16 millimeter lens over there today. And I kind of did some adjustments in the room a little bit, but I definitely need more space. Definitely need more space. Um, all right, let me see here. This table takes up all, my desk takes up all the space here. Let me make sure I highlight the ATEM too. I'm gonna highlight the ATEM, the four poor ATEM, because when you start adding multiple cameras to your setup, I think it's, I think it's real nice. Let me, I'm supposed to be shouting out Zego today. They sent me the camera, so I gotta dedicate some time to it. So let me make sure I look at y'all on this camera, uh, for sure. Uh, so Chris put that in there, cool, cool, cool. When starting on Amazon Live, do you have to have the products physically to get started? 
you don't, but it's a lot easier to have the products. One, for your audience. Um, I like to share what I actually use and be able to talk about it in that manner. Now, if you don't have products that you are very knowledgeable of, you can do that as well. So for example, you know, I've got, you know, this big soft box and I've got that light behind me, but there's other lights that I'm familiar with. And maybe there's a sale on Amazon. I could definitely add those to my product carousel um, down below my live streams and like highlight those and explain those and tell people the benefits of it and, you know, some of the use cases behind it. So you don't necessarily have to have it, but if you, if you go to amazon.com forward slash live, You'll see a bunch. Now, don't do it now. Don't 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 leave my live stream now. Go after I'm done. But if you go to Amazon.com forward slash live, you'll see a lot of live streamers. And we talk about all kinds of different stuff. Um, so obviously you've got beauty channels, you've got clothing channels, you've got uh, other tech channels, you've got like any and everything that's sold on Amazon, like anything you can think of. If you want to go downstairs and like talk about your washer and dryer unit, if you wanted to talk about, you know, outside patio furniture and do a live stream outside if you wanted to talk about car stuff like cheryl she's in our uh, facebook group she goes to car shows and talks outside um at car shows about cleaning products you can talk about anything that's on amazon you just have to be approved for their influencer program um and chris is never too much gear <laughs> uh let's go back over here all right facebook and uh let me see there's people still watch me on Facebook. Y'all ain't come over here to Amazon yet. Uh, let's see. Julian, let me scroll back up here. Courtney, what's going on, sir? Uh, Julian says, hey, Monty, do you like that huge ATEM? I've been curious about it. Yes, I do. And here is why. Let me see if I can. All right, I'm gonna hope this shot doesn't blink. If ah, it's blinking, blinking. I want to blink, blink, and blink y'all out here. All right, we'll go back over here. But I need, I want to zoom in on it so you guys have a better perspective of it. So let me see if I can prop up. Do I have a tripod? I know I got a small tripod somewhere around here that I could use real quick. Maybe not. I've got, a, like, if y'all don't see it, like, but behind here, behind this camera, I literally have a box full of stuff, gear, microphones, and everything and then i have a travel case under there and then that box i think is where my tripods are so i'm trying to see if i got another little tripod somewhere close by which i don't think i do all right so let's do this then i'm i need to set this up so y'all can see let's do this all right so let's jerry rig some equipment together so i can show the a10 and why i like it i like the a10 because it gives me eight inputs which is one reason right since you guys see all the camera angles, but and I mean, that's pretty much the main reason because it gives me eight inputs that I can use. All right, so let's do this. Let's do. All right, please don't fall. All right, let's not do that. Let's not do that. I ain't breaking no equipment today. Not today. All right, so let's do this. So I'm gonna zoom in on the ATEM, that way I can kind of walk through the functions and why I like the ATEM. All right, let's see here. All right, let's just go to camera eight. Okay, and let's see if I can turn this just a tad. It's not gonna quite, I need my over the shoulder shot. All right, let's do, let's do this one. Let's do this. So I'm gonna move this camera. So close your eyes for three seconds so I can move the camera. All right. All right, there we go. All right, so question on, where was the question? Facebook or YouTube? Uh, all right, Julian's question on Facebook. Um, huge ATEM, been curious about it. So. I wish it would stop blinking, but y'all will get the context of it. Let me highlight it in the product carousel so we're all on the same page. Chris, I need a show producer. That's what I'm figuring out right now. I need a show producer. <laughs> uh, camera three, camera two. 
Uh, <laughs> all right, so eight inputs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, here is like a preview of all my inputs. I have camera one, which is actually my teleprompter setup. Camera two, which I'm not using right now. Camera three is my laptop feed is coming into here. Camera four is my overhead shot of the desk. Camera five is my PTZ camera that I disconnected to show you the Zego camera. That's on number eight. Number six is my camera that I need to replace the cable in. Number seven is this camera that's looking at me right now. So I have eight different inputs that are coming in. So that's really why I like the eight input one, okay? This is also allowing me to bring in two microphones to come into the ATEM itself so I can control this all from one setting. So right now I'm using my Rode Wireless Go and that's number one input that's coming in. And I have the ability to bring in another one if I wanted to, audio input. And then I have the ability to monitor my audio with headphones. So that's the main functions that I use it for. Half the buttons, like literally this whole strip of buttons between here and here, I don't even touch and use because these are used for controlling the black magic cameras, which I don't have any black magic cameras. I just use Sony cameras for now. And I, I use a couple buttons up here on the top row, these two up on the top row to do like some picture and picture stuff. So I can do, let's say I wanted to do, let's do DVE eight and do picture in picture to show you a close up here. So I can do some picture in picture with this as well, but you can do these on the four, uh, the four input ones as well. And then there's some configurable macros. I don't ever use my macros to do different setups, a lot of transition effects, uh, being able to send a program feed so I can send this feed to one display, what you see here. So I can see all my, my previews here and I can see my actual live input on that monitor right there. So that's the function of having two outputs that I really like. So I know what's going on on the output and I can monitor everything here. My audio levels, I can monitor my recordings. I could monitor if I was recording. Um, and then obviously all the camera shots I can record as well. So that's why I like the eight input one. And then this is the ISO version two. So all eight inputs can record at the exact same time. So if you're a content creator that needs to create regular content, you can just like record all your camera angles and then go back and find the angles that make sense to create content on you know different social media platforms. So that is, that's the ATEM there. So I hope that answers your question, Julian. Um, What's going on, Joe McDaniel? Good to see you, sir. Uh, Albert Edwards says I'm here. Joe says Amazon Live. Yeah, Amazon Live. Amazon Live. We live on Amazon, like right here. Matter of fact, let me go. To, let me go. I'm pull up Amazon Live on here. All right. So let's go. So if you're on your if you're on the phone, just type in Amazon Live four slash live, and y'all will find me. If you don't know how to do it. Or you can go to your Amazon Live app if you have Amazon Live on your app. Now, if this camera wasn't connected, I could I'd usually bring my iPad into my ATEM as well as another source. So if I didn't, if I wasn't using this camera right now because I'm using the connection on it, I would bring it into here. So on my iPad, I'm going to look for live streams. So I'm going to tap the little icon on the top left and search for programs and features expand that and go down to Amazon Live and then type live. I must not be on the product on the home page of Amazon today. Um, and then you can see right here unboxing Zego camera. So I'll tap on myself. A lot of celebrities are over here on Amazon Live too. Um, I saw Raven Simone was on Amazon Live and boom, there's me on Amazon Live talking to myself about Amazon Live. <laughs> uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. So I'm looking at myself so many times in here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Like I got, I'm looking at myself too many times. I need a producer. All right, so let's go back to my app. Um, Julian says, what's the camera with the remote? I have so many questions. The camera with the remote. So today's camera with the remote that I'm talking about is the Zego, which is this one. So the Zego, it comes with the remote. So it comes with this remote right here. 
that I can use to actually do the left, right, up, down. So I don't even need the controller. Like if you're if you're just getting into the space, you don't have to feel like you need a controller to control a PTZ camera. You can use it with a remote. Put your batteries in here. I can do presets, zoom in, zoom out, all with the remote. Let me show you the remote over here on camera one. I'm sitting a little low, but because I didn't move everything around. But you can camera one, two, three, and four, and then the one through nine buttons, those are actually presets that you can configure. And then um, at the bottom of the remote, um, oops, right there. You can zoom in, zoom out, focus, autofocus, change the setting, you know, backlight. There's a lot of settings that you can change on the PTZ remotes, especially if you're in different lighting environments. Uh, all right, still going down Facebook. My wife says, is your teleprompter on right now? So my teleprompter is on right now, but it's not quite working because I think I disconnected something on accident moving too fast and I just haven't had the time to go back and do it. But usually on my teleprompter, let me highlight the teleprompter in the carousel here. I'm using the Glide Gear TMP 100. Usually my teleprompter, and, and there's a monitor underneath here too. Usually I like to look at myself so I know that I'm in frame on my teleprompter. So the shot that you're seeing right now, I like to look at myself to know that I'm in frame, but because my cable connection is doing something that I just don't feel like troubleshooting, then I can't see myself, but my it's still connected like for Zoom, I can bring over a Zoom window and anything on screen essentially is over there. So let's see, so let me show you. Let me see what I can bring without messing up anything real quick. Uh, all right, let's bring the Amazon Live window. So I can bring my Amazon Live window into my teleprompter screen. And so the same for Zoom and everything like that, then I can see what's going on. But just to watch myself right now, it's just not set up. So, but I wish it was because I don't like looking at a black screen, but ah, uh, you know, you get used to it. Um, let's see. Then I saw something about the monitor. I'm using the Lilliput A11 for this setup. Now, with the TMP, with the TMP 100 teleprompter, I did have a seven inch monitor that I was using, but it's, uh, let me see here. Uh, let me go, let me go wide here. Camera two, zoom out, let's go this way. All right. I was using this Field World seven inch up here, but it was like way too small. So I just went up one more size. So I can use my Field World more so for the other, um, for the other uh, things I do out in the field more so. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right, let me, let me go back to Facebook, I'm trying to run down all these Facebook questions. Y'all are, y'all are active today. That's cool. Uh, what's blinking? I'm on all three platforms. The blinking is the ATEM or the cable on the PTZ. Julian says, do you use the ATEM feature for hanging multiple cameras on screen at the same time too? Not PMP, but actually having more than one at a time. I don't, but you can. Um, they have the, these have the ability. Like if I wanted to do a four picture shot, I could do that. Uh, but I don't necessarily use it for that. There's a little bit more configuration um, that you have to set up on the. So I could do something like let me see if I have this set up. Something like that, where I could have side by sides together going on. Uh, but I don't ever really use that function for my ATEM. Uh, let's see, uh, Julian, you were right. You do got a lot of questions on here, but I don't mind. I like it. Um, you going straight live from the ATEM or using it with Ecamm. So, um, my platforms of choice, I'm not an Ecamm person. So I know I have a Mac over here, but I'm not an Ecamm person, unfortunately. Um, cause there's just so many platforms out there. Now you can go live directly from your ATEM to 
any platform you want. You just have to put in your stream keys and your URLs in your ATEM. How I'm using it is to use a live streaming platform, but I'm using Wirecast to do it. So I'm going the physical connection, USB out of my ATEM, just one connection into the back of my Mac, uh, Mac Mini back there. So let me move this back a little bit here and kind of readjust here. And let me get the Zego going over here. All right, and walk through that a little bit. All right, okay. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so I'm going out of my ATEM, one connection into my Mac mini, and then I'm bringing it in into Wirecast because that I've been using Wirecast for so long. When everybody was going live to Amazon or when everybody was going live to Facebook at first, everybody was using their, their smartphones to go live to Facebook. Wirecast was one of the first platforms that had it built where you could go live from your computer to Facebook. So I've like, I can't even, I don't even think I've ever gone live to Facebook directly from my cell phone. I've always gone live to Facebook from my computer since day one when they introduce Facebook Live. I've always gone from my computer um, because Wirecast allowed for it, so I've been using them ever since. Now I do use some other platforms and you guys will see, especially on YouTube, we got something coming out for that, so make sure you subscribe over there too. Um, but for this setup, I'm going into, um, I'm going into Wirecast today we're also using Switchboard. So if you're, in a, if you're in my Amazon Live creators group and you wanna do some beta testing with me, um, like make sure you look at the post I put in there so you can help me beta test because um, it'll get more people to see us on Amazon Live. And so my black magic is just um, an input video source here. Uh, let's see here. Albert says, I use NDI to get multi-camera display on virtual cam. When Kirk and Monty talk about NDI in the future, you may want to tune in to that. Kirk, if you're still here, definitely put in the next time you have a show because that's because I know you can hit these topics a lot too in your show. Uh, I would like to restream your next show to our World Media Network platform. Cool, Joseph, um, I think I see a notification that you hit me up. Definitely we'll talk about that. I can get get my squad in here to uh we can walk through that because uh that'll be pretty cool um let's see youtube greetings all uh let's see da, 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 just passing through i think i got that thanks for the demo okay i got all that cool one blanket okay i think i'm all caught up there all right cool now let's catch up on amazon live uh, do, 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 do. Thank you guys for all the follows. I appreciate you guys for hanging out. And definitely any questions you guys have about any of the products in the carousel, let me know. All right, let's see. So Kurt says monitor, we got that. Robert Bourne says, if you're not an influencer on other platforms, can you still join Amazon Live? So I use the word in influencer lightly. You just have to have a following. Um, so if you have enough followers on other platforms, um, I would definitely go ahead and apply. Uh, Julian says, have you experienced at all the A10 macros? I want to get the big A10, but I need to be able to have two to four cameras on screen at the same time. So I haven't personally done the macros, but I've watched some other channels that have talked about the macro setup. So it's something you can definitely do. Uh, just said video qualities are amazing. Appreciate it. Uh, Kurt says, say that one more time. Lily put what? Uh, Lily put A11, the one I have highlighted in the product carousel on Amazon. Lily put A11. That's the one I'm using. Now, for some reason, what I wanted to do, but it's not working, and I don't know if it's just me, but the, the A11 has an input, which I'm basically using as a secondary monitor. So it's the easiest way to think about it for the teleprompters is I have monitor one and monitor two, okay? So you guys know how if you use two monitors, you can just drag something over to your second monitor. So it's connected to my, uh, my Mac, just like any other monitor would be. Monitor 
connected here, monitor connected here, right? So easy. There's an input and an output here, right? So the input is the one that's connected to the Mac. The output, which is HDMI, is what I wanna to connect to my ATEM, but it's not working. And I need to figure that one out because I wanna be able to run my ATEM or I wanna be able to run my monitor out into my ATEM to not only see what's on the monitor, but to also get the audio. Because I teach a mastermind, and in the mastermind, we, we, we hit on some awesome stuff, but I don't, want to I don't want to record it just for the sake of recording. I want to record for the sake of repurposing content on some like the good parts of it that I think can help people. But I'm only able to get the audio of myself because only my audio is coming through, not the screen audio. So I'm going to play with that a little bit more. But that's one of the things I like about the Lilliput A11 is it has input and an output. But I just got to get that. I just need to be able to create time in my schedule to really sit down and troubleshoot getting that audio out of that monitor into my ATEM the way I want to record. Uh, Julian says, I want to hear more about the Zego. Can you go over some of the features? Yep, I'll jump on that here in a second. Let me check Albert's question. Notice that you have a hub under your Mac Mini. I have a Satachi. The USB-C does not work on the front for me. Have you tried yours? Yes, so I have the Satachi on the front of mine as well and my USB-C works um, let's see camera six and let's zoom in here with this super joy controller I'm getting a little bit better at my my controls here on that super joy but yeah so underneath here now Satachi does have a new hub that you can put the, you can sneak the hard drive in underneath it because this one doesn't have the ability for the hard drive but the new ones you can actually put a separate hard drive underneath it and just like hide it and tuck it away right um, but yeah so my USB-C port works just fine and then I have um, USB that I use all the time and the uh, keyboards in one my mouse is in one and then my SD card is in the other so but yeah mine mine works just fine haven't had any issues with it uh, let's see here what else we got and then we'll talk Zego stuff again here so Kirk's good Kristen thanks for the follow on Amazon all right let me make sure I'm caught up on these platforms uh I don't want to pronounce the name wrong on YouTube so I'm just gonna read the comments it's nice one I was watching uh, you live for the first time your videos are great appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it all right, cool. So I think I'm caught up on all the comments on everywhere. So we'll go back and look at the, yeah, I don't have anything plugged into USB-C today, but I use it all the time, Albert. Like, I literally use my USB-C like all the time. I just don't have anything plugged in it today. Um, I have my uh, <laughs> my Shure microphone is down here. I'm not gonna grab it because I'm gonna knock something over. But when I do like the, like the, some of the training stuff, I use my USB-C on here just because the audio sounds a little bit deeper and cleaner all right so let's jump over to oh man it's been 90 minutes already i've been on here for an hour and a half i told my wife 90 minutes and i'm gonna get off um let's let's do all right what can we do real quick about the zigo all right let me switch cameras let me highlight the Zego and the Procursa. Cool, cool. Good to see you, Albert. Enjoy the class. All right, let's jump back over here into our Zego overhead here. And let me move some things around for a little picture-in-picture -picture action so you guys can see what's going on. The DVE 7 on. Oops. I'm gonna change that back to there. Okay. So today we unboxed, literally took it out the box, the Zego PTZ camera. So let me move that back down. And let me turn it off and unplug a couple things here as well for anybody that came in a little bit later. And let me get this lighting readjusted. 
over here too. Okay, all right, so I think we're good to go. So this is the Zego PTZ camera. Um, and I have this highlighted in the Amazon product carousel right now. So if you click on it, it'll bring up the, the, the product itself. Now, this is a PoE 20X. So essentially this is power over ethernet. So you can either plug in your power, your traditional power here with the brick. Let me grab that real quick. So you have, you know, typical power. Okay, plug this into here. Oops, okay, plug that into there. Plug this into the wall, right? Plug the other end into your camera, okay? So you can power it on this way, or you can use a PoE switch and run an ethernet connection to power it on, okay? So which, that's what I have here, is literally, I have my network cable plugged into here and underneath my desk, I have a little small PoE switch and I'll highlight that in the product carousel. So, so when I actually hit the on button here, it'll power it on, power over ethernet. Okay, so now it's turning on and setting itself up. Um, all right, my wife said, no worries, take your time. Awesome, I love you so much. Um, I'm in my zone right now too, y'all. So y'all know how it is when you're in your zone. You don't want to end your zone because uh, you're in your zone. So she, she gave me the go ahead. So I promise I'll eat. I promise I'll eat lunch. <laughs> um, so we got it powered on by Ethernet. And we can connect it physically. Here's why I like PoE switch. Or here's why I like PTZ cameras. Okay, let me. I got to come on camera. Like sometimes when I teach, the people that are like in my classes and stuff, like when I go in teacher mode, like, there's reasons behind stuff that I think that people just need to understand for context. The PTZ cameras give you a lot of functionality. I mean, a lot. One of those things is the ability to connect multiple connections and stream to different areas from your PTZ. So what I mean by that is the PTZ camera will allow you to use your ethernet connection and run a feed from your in, your like your video feed itself via ethernet to wherever you want it to go you can run your hdmi output to a different location so like if i want to run my hdmi to a tv or a camera and another or to a, like a projector screen or something i can run a direct hdmi to that and then i could also run an sdi out to another location so you essentially can split your feed three different ways just from the camera itself if you wanted to, okay? It's a simultaneous feed going to three different locations. Now, I don't ever use it that way. Like the most I probably do is two using my HDMI and my uh, SDI. But I also have another, my other PTZ camera has USB on it. So like there's a whole bunch of different ways you can just bring your video out. Then you have your USB 2.0 that allows you to uh, update the firmware. So literally you plug in a little USB stick and update your firmware. You can do it that way or you can just do it over Ethernet. It's up to you. Um, power button right there. Th this little dial here, um, I know it's a little bit far away, but you can change your resolution 1080p 60, 1080p 30, 720, all that good stuff by this little dial here. And then something you can do is run your audio in here too. Now, I don't run my audio in through my camera. I'd much rather control my audio somewhere else through an audio mixer. So like right now, my audio is coming through my ATEM, but, um, you know, let me switch over here. My audio is coming in through my ATEM right here. So I'd rather run my connection into here to control audio so I can monitor my audio and adjust the volume up and down and all that stuff. I don't want it to run necessarily into my camera so, but it's up to different use cases for that, right? Then you have your RS-232 connections. So basically, I'm going to take my uh, uh, cable here that's connected to my SuperJoy controller and just plug this into here, okay? So my SuperJoy controller cable right here coming out is the same cable that's going in right here. So now if I go to camera one, 
I'm controlling my camera with the joystick, okay? I gotta do presets too. I haven't set up presets for y'all today. All right, so can, can, uh, can, uh, controlling it through that. And then if I want the daisy chain, I would just come out of this camera. And the other end is going in to my other camera. And so then I'm able to daisy chain these together. And then again, it also comes with the remote. So take this out. I don't really need, I'll just grab a remote that's already open. It's the same remote, so. So, remote, I can set this up for camera one. Let's see, if it'll blink, you guys will see it blink. So you see, it'll blink right here in the status, standby mode right there. So now, I'm controlling it with my camera, with my remote. Up, down, all right, all that with the remote. Um, uh, presets. Let's do presets real quick. And let me go over here. All right. So the camera angle right now, let's get it to a diff decent angle. Oh, battery's dying now. Battery's dying for sure on my wireless setup now. All right. So let's physically put that back in. All right. So let's make, let's turn off this real quick. And... No, that's not dying yet. I just unplugged it for the example. For, there we go. I'm not, I'm not giving my battery life a lot of love today. Uh, Julian says, which controller for the Zego do you prefer best value? Um, so I use two. So I, I'm gonna highlight the Huddle Cam because the Huddle Cam will work. And if you want me to demo it, I'll demo it just, you know, to show you that it works. So the Huddle Cam works, but I, I more so definitely prefer the Superjoy because it's IP based and if it's on my network and the, the, control, the Superjoy controller itself gives me a lot more functionality than the Huddle Cam, um, but either one worked just fine. Like I, if I had a preference, I'd go, Huddle, uh, I'd go Superjoy because of the number of things I can do with it, but I use the Huddle Cam for like every video that I have on YouTube so far except for the one that specifically talks about the Superjoy. All right, so let me see if I got my camera back there. All right, so I got camera back over here. So I'm gonna set up some presets on this on the Zego, right? So make it look like we're in a little cool little studio, right? So preset number one, let me show you what it's looking at. So right now it's looking at that. That's an ugly shot, right? So we wanna kind of control this with our remote and we'll make this shot number one. So what I'm gonna do is on my remote, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit the word preset. And then I'm gonna do one. And what it does is it'll lock this in as one. And you actually saw it on the screen there, right? So I'm gonna reposition this camera somewhere else and we'll reposition it up here to look at that camera. And I'm gonna call this preset number two, okay? So I'm just gonna hit preset two, and you see set two populates in that top left corner for me. So I don't wanna hurt your eyes too much, but I'm gonna come over to camera one. Now I'm gonna come to camera seven real quick. So now on my remote, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press one on my remote and I want you to watch the camera move, okay? Cause I set it as a preset. So when you have multiple camera angles, you don't want a lot of camera movement if you can prevent it. So you can have one like this one, which is stationary, and the one that cuts to different shots. So I'm gonna hit camera one here, and it's gonna move if I did this right. So now, when I go back to that PT, my Zigo, it's showing that shot, right? So now I'm gonna do camera or, or uh, preset two, and it's gonna go and change and look up there. So I'm gonna do number two, and all I'm doing is hitting number two. It moved. Now if I cut back, you'll see it's looking at that angle up there. So the presets can all, you can control all the functionality on the remote if you wanted to, or on the controller, or use both, just back and forth between the two. So you got options. I like stuff that gives you options. All right, let's see. Um, 
Super Tiger started following. Appreciate the follow. Appreciate you being here on Amazon. We we're talking about the Zego camera and a whole bunch of other stuff today. Um, in the product carousel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me check Facebook real quick. Oh, I just now saw the laughing emoji for my wife. Um, let's see. YouTube, I am late. What are you using to control these cameras? So to control the cameras, a couple different things. Um, let me readjust this because this I don't like that shot. All right. So to control the cameras, they're all connected to my ATEM. And I've got a couple different ATEMs in there. So I'll go down to the the least expensive one. Um, 295 now it does there's one feature like the the multi view that the 295 one doesn't have but if you're like kind of just getting started in a video and you want to connect multiple cameras and just easily switch between them that would be like the base to start and that's the one i set up at my, my my local church so i'm controlling them by just tapping on which input i want and i can visually see all my inputs here so that's kind of how i'm controlling them the physical control um is with either the remote or with the actual joysticks and the joysticks are only controlling the movement of the camera they're not actually controlling me switching between the cameras that you see on screen they're just controlling the movement of the camera um now you know this camera right here is stationary so there's no movement that goes along with it that's why i get up and, and change that one um, my main camera on the teleprompter that's a stationary camera, so I'm not changing any movements with that. So just my PTZ cameras are the ones that are being adjusted. Um, Willie says, what does it mean to daisy chain? Okay, so you must have missed that part. So basically, daisy chaining is connecting one PTZ camera to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. So I'm actually controlling both of my PTZ cameras with one joystick. So camera so let me switch over here so this ptz camera we have our controller coming into our camera right here on the first one and then we have it coming out we have a separate cable going out directly from here and going into here the input of this one oops going into the input of this one and then if we want the connect another one essentially what we're doing is daisy chaining another one out of here and in to the input of another camera now you can do that for you know this type of setup you don't want to daisy chain like power strips together that's like a huge no-no it's like a fire hazard so don't daisy chain power strips together where people need more power so they'll get a power strip and they'll connect one power strip to the other power strip and then connect it so they think the power can go all the way down you don't really don't want to do that but for cameras, like daisy chaining is a good thing. Um, that way you don't have to run separate cables from your controller to different cameras. You're just connecting camera to camera to camera to camera. So I hope that answered that for you. And all right, I think I'm caught up there. I did presets for you guys. So I think I'm caught up there. All right, any last minute questions that you guys have? I hope this live stream has been helpful, um, enjoyable, entertaining, beneficial, insightful, all those good things. Good to see some of my uh, uh, my fellow live streamers here on Amazon be able to stop through and other content creators as well. So, But if you guys have any last minute questions, let me know and we'll go through those before we wrap up. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything there. Awesome. So everything is here in the, the product carousel. If you see anything, go ahead and click. Uh, definitely uh, stay tuned for additional Amazon live streams uh, where we talk digital, we talk tech. We got some more stuff uh, that should be showing up. I've got some equipment up here. I've got equipment in the boxes. So we'll be talking about some more things here um, over the next few weeks. And then stay tuned for some behind the scenes videos as well 
of the travel setup for the conference so you guys can kind of see how I take stuff with me. May, depending on the time, I may even try to do an Amazon Live from the conference if we have enough time and do a break and so you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, same equipment essentially, just different use case, right? So in here, everything can pretty much stay where it is and I kind of have it mapped out. But when I go to a different environment, the use case can be different. I'm not, I'm not going to use this camera probably as a primary camera. So this would actually be more of a secondary camera. So we'll talk about all that stuff if we have time um, at the actual conference. All right. Don't see any more questions coming in. I think we're good to go. Uh, John, thanks for following here on Amazon. You guys enjoy the rest of your day um, and definitely hang out on Amazon for some other um, live streamers. And until next time. You guys uh, find some cool stuff. Let me know what you get and uh, I'll talk to you in the next live stream.